Hello and welcome. I'm Justin Luchens, a developer technology engineer here at NVIDIA. And today I'm going to show you how you can accelerate your application with PGI CUDA Fortran. So to start off, we want to talk about what GPU computing is. So in, in our programs, we have some serial code or possibly parallel code that runs on the CPU. At some point, our application reaches a large amount of work, uh, which we can put onto the GPU because it's, it's highly parallel. Uh, and the GPU will execute this, this work uh, in parallel with hundreds of cores versus a CPU which only uses a, a few cores. Now the GPU has some has very dedicated fast GPU memory uh, which goes up to 177 gigabytes a second on our current best hardware. Uh, similarly the a, a CPU has about 32 gigabytes a second. So you can see right here that there can be a huge bandwidth advantage for using a GPU. Uh, in addition, the, the GPU has hundreds of cores, where, again, the CPU only has a few cores. Uh, and these two are connected together by a PCI Express bus, which gets about 8 gigabytes a second. Because of this, we need to have dedicated memory. Uh, so we have our own GPU memory, and we're going to have uh, our variables will be living, are allocated directly on the GPU and transferred there explicitly. Today, we're going to look at a common algorithmic pattern which is the 1D stencil. And in this case, we're going to be summing the input elements within a, a radius of a 1D array. So we're going to be summing, in the case that we're looking at, three elements to the left and three elements to the right, and that will give us the, the value for the middle element. This type of pattern is fundamental to many algorithms uh, that derive from standard discretization methods, interpolation, convolution, and filtering. It also has applications in seismic processing, weather simulation, image processing, and computational fluid dynamics. So to start, let's look at the serial algorithm. So in this case, we're going to be summing over uh, a certain number of elements, seven in, in this case that we're looking at. And here I have an input array and an output array. And I've marked the, the, the elements that we're going to be summing over and highlighted the element that we're going to be writing to. And as the algorithm moves forward, it will grab each uh, value from the input array and sum them into the output array. And this is going to repeat for every element. So that is the serial algorithm. So now let's look at the serial code in Fortran 90. So here we have a program uh, <coughs> where we are going to, first of all, the first thing we do is we need to allocate our resources. So we have some variables, in this case in and out, which are two arrays, uh, and we're going to allocate them size n. And then we're going to call some function to initialize those arrays. That's just any function that we have to put data into them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply a stencil. And so right now we just use a function call to that. And I have that function on the right, and we'll get into that in a second. And then finally, we want to deallocate the memory. Now if we look at the actual for the Fortran 90 implementation of the apply stencil 1D, you can see that it loops over from the radius plus 1 to n minus radius. The reason that we loop over uh, these bounds is that we only want to execute on the interior elements. The exterior elements are generally uh, considered the boundary conditions, and they are going to be handled separately through e a different uh, function call. Now what we do is we are going to initialize our output value at the index that we're at to 0, and then we're going to loop from the minus side of the radius to the plus side of the radius where we add in the values from the input array into that output index. So we do this, and what we see is on the Xeon X5680, we get about 0.18 giga elements per second. So now let's look at how the parallel algorithm works. So in the top here, I have the serial algorithm, and on the bottom, I have the parallel algorithm. And so when the serial algorithm is, has one thread executing doing the sum, in the parallel algorithm, there's actually many threads executing, as I've illustrated here by the, the orange squiggly lines. And so as the function executes, everything else is the exact same, except that it's now occurring multiple times in parallel. And so at the end, after this is executed in uh, one pass, many elements have been processed as opposed to just one pass. So now let's look at the difference between Fortran 90 and CUDA Fortran. So on the left here, I have the Fortran 90 version, and on the right, I have the CUDA Fortran. Here we're looking at just the main program. So the difference is I'm going to highlight in yellow, and I'm going to call them out as I see them. So here is the first thing we need to do is we use use CUDA 4. 
what this does is it tells the, the CUDA Fortran compiler that we need to use the CUDA Fort, Fortran module. The second thing we do is we need to allocate the memory. So here we declare uh, memory, uh, device memory, and we're going to use the convention D underscore in front of the name to say that this is device memory. Next, we allocate and deallocate that memory the same way we would allocate memory normally. Now, when we get to the part where we actually want to call the function, we first need to get the data to the device. And uh, in the reverse, afterwards, we need to copy that data from the device back to the host. So to copy data to the device, we can just assign the in array onto the D underscore in array. And to copy results back, we can just assign the D underscore out array into, onto the out array. CUDA Fortran knows the size of, of these arrays, and it also knows that these live in device memory, so it is able to, to transfer it directly for you. Next, what we need to do is we need to call our parallel function. This function is going to be called once for every element in our array. Uh, in addition, we need to make sure that we pass device pointers. Finally, uh, in the triple angle bracket syntax that we use, which is how we specify that this is a, a uh, CUDA kernel, it, we put in launch parameters which specify the number of threads. Now let's look at what the apply stencil function looks like. Again, I have the Fortran 90 code on the left and the CUDA Fortran code on the right. So the first difference is we add attributes uh, global onto the subroutine. This says that this is a kernel to the compiler. So the compiler knows to compile this for the device, but it's going to call it from the host. The second thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the, uh, the parameter n is passed by value. Recall in Fortran, uh, all, all, array, or all parameters are passed by default by reference. If we were to pass n by reference, that would be, a ho be in the host memory, and the device would not know its value. So here we say that we want it by value. In order for this to work, you must have your, your CUDA Fortran kernel declared inside of a module, or else explicitly declare your interface. In this case, I have decided to put it in a module. Next, instead of looping over the radius as we did in the, C, in the, Fortran, the regular Fortran 90 code, we compute a, an element index. And in this case, I, I have this line here where i is equal to the thread index plus the block index times the block dimension. This is the common formula that you're going to be using uh, for, a one, for a 1D mapping. Next thing we want to do is we want to check that we are uh, within the bounds of, of the array that we want to write to. So we check that we are greater than the radius and that we're less than or equal to and minus the radius. We do this because we're going to be launching slightly more threads than we have input elements. Uh, finally, we just add it the way we, we would normally on the CPU. The rest of the code is the exact same. And we do this, and we see that kernel-to-kernel -kernel performance uh, for our Tesla C2075 versus a Xeon gets about 5 giga elements, which is a 25x speed up. Now, if you have a little bit more time, there's a number of optimizations that you can make. The big one is that you can use CUDA shared memory, which we like to think of as a fast user-managed cache. With about one hour of work, you can get, optimize this to get up to about 9 giga elements per second. At the same time, you could also optimize the CPU code, uh, and you could also parallelize it. So you can use OpenMP to parallelize it, and you could vectorize it. And what you, could get, what you get out of that is about 1.7 giga elements a second. So in the end, we have uh, about a 3x speed up for our naive version that we first started with over an optimized and parallel Xeon, or if we spend a little bit of extra time to optimize our own also, we have a, uh, a 5x speed up. And this is versus four cores on the, on the Xeon 5760. Now with GPU computing, we have a lot of tools that you can use. These include Parallel Insight for those of you who use Windows and Visual Studio, uh, which is a parallel debugger and a parallel profiler, which is, uh, works on our GPUs. We also have the Visual Profiler, which works on Windows, Linux, and Mac, which is a profiler which tells you counter information on, on the performance of your kernels. You can use this to optimize your kernels by determining how much time you're spending in, uh, in various portions of your kernel. 
In addition, we have CUDA GDB for Linux and Mac users, which is just like GDB, except that it can, ha it can work on the GPU, and it can be used exactly like you would normally use GDB. In summary, uh, CUDA is fast. We achieved a 9x speed up for Stencil 1D versus a quad-core Xeon. In addition, CUDA is easy. We had made very few modifications to Fortran 90 in order to gain the speed up that we saw. You can download CUDA Fortran today. It's available at the link shown here. And, and we'd also like to say that CUDA has a rich, rich ecosystem. You can program in C, C++, or Fortran, and there's other bindings that people have created. Uh, we have a large array of developer tools, including debuggers and profilers, and there's already a number of libraries out there that are already exist which you can use. The advantage to these libraries is that you do not have to spend time writing the, the, the algorithms, as you can just call a function to, to execute them. You should become a registered developer if you're interested in CUDA. You can do that today by going to the website listed here.